Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 through 18. Who is behind the destruction of the world? Part 1 of 2. Are you ready for what's coming? Daniel chapter 7 is also divided into two major sections. It's a prophetic dream or vision. And it's found in Daniel 7, verse 1 through 22. Then an explanation in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Daniel chapter 2 is a framework for all the prophecies that are coming up in the book of Daniel. So Daniel chapter 7 gives you more information because you see, Daniel chapter 2, the king had the dream. And by the way, the king didn't have the dream because God was talking to the king. The king had the dream so God can introduce Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego to show that it is through his servants that anything can be done. The king was being told that it was not him that conquered Judah. It was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that gave him Judah. But here in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel is having this vision. There's a difference. So God is going to give Daniel more information. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts that came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So here, we are being given symbols. So in order for us to understand these symbols, we have to go to the Bible to understand these symbols. You and I cannot put our own explanation for these symbols. So what does the Bible say that winds represent, sea or beast represent? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 36 to 37, the Bible says, And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them towards all those winds. And there shall be no nation whither the outcast of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, said the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. So this is called Hebrew parallelism, meaning that I can say one word at the beginning of a sentence and use other words to explain what I was saying at the beginning of the passage. We could see that it says that I will bring four winds, and then it goes down, I will cause Elam to be dismayed, comparing it to wind. I will bring evil, that's war, commotion and destruction. So I will send the sword after them. So there's war till I have consumed them. So when in this particular situation in prophecy, it means war. It means destruction, strife, war, and commotion. In Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1 and 4, the Bible says, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. So now the Bible is connecting the word destruction and wind together. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are trust to her streets. So when, in biblical prophecy, represents war, destruction, commotion. So what does the Bible say great sea represent? In Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, the Bible says, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, whether whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Some people will say, well, these are waters that represents people, multitudes and nations and tongues. So now we need to see whether or not water and sea are synonymous. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible says, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So the gathering together of the waters are called seas. 
So waters and sea are basically synonymous. You can say sea or water. So what does great beasts represent in biblical prophecy? Daniel 7, 17 says, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings. Daniel 7, 23 says, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Straightforward. There's no need for us to be breaking our head trying to find out what water or beast represent because the Bible explains what these things represent. So when you see beast, it can either represent king or kingdom. Let's look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 2 and 3 again and replace the word that we have found to the symbolic word. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, four wars of the heavens strove upon the great nations, and four great kingdoms that came up from these nations that were diverse, meaning different one from another. So there's going to be four major wars. I'm not talking about World War One and Two. Four major wars that will change empires. That's what the Bible says. Daniel chapter 7 verse 4 says, The first, the first kingdom, was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So now, since Daniel chapter 2 is the framework for all the other prophecies, we will begin to see whether or not what we are reading in Daniel chapter 7 matches Daniel chapter 2. If Daniel chapter 2 is the framework for all the prophecies that comes after. So the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. We know that a lion with eagle's wings, as archaeology so graciously have proven, it represented Babylon. And as we see this picture right here with the lion with eagle's wing, the head is actually Nebuchadnezzar's head that was put on, on this line. So through archaeology, the symbol for Babylon was a lion with eagle's wings. And of course, we know that Babylon lasted from 605 BC to 539 BC. We know that the wings that was plucked was Nebuchadnezzar's pride when he got beside himself and God took the kingdom from him. We find that in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 and 31. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? See, the Bible says, While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. So God took the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 5 verse 20 to 21 says, But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of man, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Don't mess with God. You weren't the one that allowed all this to happen? Don't claim it. So as we look at comparing Daniel chapter 2 with Daniel chapter 7, we see that the head of gold, and the lion with eagle's wing, they both represent Babylon. Continuing. Daniel chapter 7 verse 5 says, it, And behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. We know that to be Medo-Persia. And some wonder, what are those three ribs that's in the bear's mouth? Well, these three ribs represent the provinces that Media Persia had to conquer in order for them to acquire Babylon. 
it was Babylon, Lydia, and Egypt. They had to conquer these provinces in order to take over Babylon. So the bear with three ribs in its mouth represents Media Persia. And so we see comparing it with Daniel chapter 2 again. The two arms, one higher than the other, and the bear raising itself on one side is the imbalance of power that was between the Medes and the Persians. You see, the Persians were stronger than the Medes. The uncle served a term, the Medes, and the nephew, the Persians, came after and ruled. That was the Medes and the Persians. After this, the Bible says, I beheld in law another like the leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. So we see that the next kingdom also acquired all the wealth. So who is that that came after the Medes and the Persians? Well, we know it is Alexander the Great of Macedonia. Well, we know that the history tells us that uh, Alexander the Great died a drunkard stupor at the age, I believe, 33. And then we know that because Alexander the Great had four generals, the four heads of this leopard, when Alexander the Great died, these four generals took over. Ptolemy, Cassander, Lysimachus, Silicus, they took over and then the Greek Empire split into four. Amazing how the Bible is so straightforward, direct, continuing. So we see, comparing it again with Daniel chapter 2, the next kingdom that came after Media Persia was Greece. And the leopard with the forehead and the four wings, it shows the swiftness that Alexander the Great was able to conquer the whole known world because he conquered it fast. Imagine that at the age of 33, you were the king of all the world. Daniel 7 verse 7 says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. Sounds familiar? It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. We know this to be pagan Rome. The iron teeth, the iron leg. When we compare it, we see that it compares with the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had in Daniel chapter 2. Let's continue. And it says it had 10 horns. What does horn represent in biblical prophecy? Well, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 24, And the 10 horns out of this kingdom, the fourth kingdom, are 10 kings who shall arise. That means when that kingdom came about, these 10 kings or 10 nations were not dead. They will arise after. Was that 10 nation that arose after the fall of the Roman Empire? Of course. After the fall of the Roman Empire, these 10 individual nations came about. This is who we are today. You have the English, the French, the German, the Italian, the Spanish, the Swiss, the Portuguese. But of course, there are three that are unknown. We know their name, but we don't know what they believed in. We know that they were the Ostrogoths and the Herali. Let's look at what the Bible says happened to them. We know that the kingdom, pagan Rome, was from 168 BC to 476 AD. And these 10 kingdoms came in and they occupied from 476 to 538 AD. So now the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, I considered the horns. So Daniel is looking at the 10 horns. And then he said, Behold, there came up among them, among the 10 horns, Another little horn. Remember, Daniel 7.24 says, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings who shall arise. So this little horn is a little king with a little nation. And the Bible continues to say, Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men, 
in a mouth speaking great things. So there was a beast that came up. The beast had 10 horns. And now we're seeing that among these 10 horns, and this little horn that comes up, which is a little king, and this little horn is very feisty because this little horn is speaking great things, boastful things. We know that the Ostrogoths, the Vandals, and the Heavily are unknown. But who destroyed them? We've come to a point where we, we're seeing this little horn come into the picture and we don't know who this little horn is. And this little horn is suggested that he had a hand on the destruction of these three kingdoms or three nations. Who is this little horn? Daniel 7 verse 9 says, And I beheld the thrones were cast down, meaning there was a throne that is set. And the Ancient of Days, God the Father, did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. There's a court that is just started. The courtroom is open. And the Bible continues to say. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set. And the books were open. That is interesting. Very, very interesting because you see, after we see this little horn, he came up. We're still on earth now. We're looking at history going down to the end of time. There is Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, 10 kingdoms, this little horn. And then now we're seeing that the Bible is talking about a judgment that begins. And the books were open. Now, I'm kind of confused because, you see, most Christianity, they tell you when you die, that's when you're judged. But here there's a judgment that begins. So who's being judged? We shall soon find out. Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 says, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, the little horn. So because of the voice, because of what the little horn was saying, the Bible says, I beheld even till the beast the fourth kingdom was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That means because of this little horn comes the destruction of the last kingdom and the destruction of the world. Daniel chapter 7 verse 12 said, As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season in time. You see, the fourth kingdom was destroyed. The empire was taken away from these kings. But God allowed their lives to prolong for a little bit. Now, when we go forward in, into studying prophecy, we will see why God allowed them to stay alive for a little bit. We're not going to touch on that today. So now we're seeing Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, pagan Rome. And then this 10 kingdom, the little horn, we're seeing a judgment happening. We're seeing the destruction of the fourth kingdom, the fourth empire, which had the 10 horns. Verse 13 says, I saw in the night vision and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. The son of man, we know that the son of man is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came near to God the father. And there was given him dominion and glory in a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So here Jesus Christ comes up to the Father and the Father gives him authority over the world. So you mean to tell me, Daniel chapter 7 has given us a chronological order of events that is going to happen, that might happen, that will happen. Daniel chapter 7 took us from Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, 10 kingdoms, this little horn, and it's talking about a judgment that is happening as we speak. And then the fourth kingdom is destroyed, the 10 horn and everything in it, but the lives of the kings will prolong for a time and season. And then we see God the Father 
given Jesus Christ the title of king over the nations. And then the second coming of Jesus Christ. So does Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7 match? Of course they do. Because God's word does not contradict itself. Daniel chapter 7 verse 15 says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, in the visions of my head troubled me. It would trouble me too. So we see now, we're not dealing with Babylon, Media, Persia, or Greece. We're talking about now. We're looking after pagan Rome from 168 BC to 476 AD. We're looking after that from now on. So we are seeing now this little horn comes up and he's the reason for the destruction of the fourth kingdom. Because the Bible says by the words that he spoke and then we see a judgment. Then we see the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom is slain. And then the everlasting kingdom. Daniel 7 verse 16 says, I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretation of the thing. Daniel 7 17 says, these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Not might arise, which shall arise out of the earth. Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, ten kingdoms, little horn. But the saints... God's people now, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now that is a positive, that is a blessing because the Bible now is letting us know that, that we have gained the victory over everything because we will possess the kingdom forever and ever. The question is left for our next study to find out who is this little horn that caused the destruction of the world. And what about this judgment? Whom does the Bible say is being judged right now? We need to find out. Be sure to look for Daniel chapter 7, part 2. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 through 18. Who is behind the destruction of the world? And of part 1 of 2. Time is at hand. Get ready, get ready, get ready.